Hello there. I was watching a video on YouTube uh, recently and it was quite an old video and the people in what looked like an electronics lab were using an oscilloscope to visualize the, the waveforms being produced by a synthesizer. And I thought that looked really cool. So I've been looking around to see if I could find um, an oscilloscope VST, an oscilloscope plugin to visualize um, the kind of waveforms that are being produced within the the music production software. So one that I found, which you can get with uh, Ableton Live, down at the bottom here, joe.oscilloscope, which I've um, put in there. And this is a Max for Live device. So I'll just let you have a look at how this, um, this appears. You can see down in the bottom right hand corner here. But there's also an expand function. So you can open it up and you can visualize the waveforms in the sound that's being produced um, within your door. So that's pretty cool if you've got Ableton, but it's a Max for Live device. And I think Max for Live is a, a kind of a um, an additional application that only comes with the most expensive version of Ableton Live, which is Ableton Live Suite. So if you don't have Ableton Live Suite, you'd have to pay extra to get Max for Live. And that might not be an option, or you might not lose, use Apple, Ableton at all and um, have to look at other options. So one that I did find is just called Oscilloscope, imaginatively. And this is produced by um, an organization called Soka Labs. And it's hard to find out very much information about them, but they produce a range of um, plugins. They, they produce um, compressors and visualizers like uh, this oscilloscope and they're really really good so I'll, I'll just show you how this looks so um, in actual fact I'll just turn off Joe oscilloscope at the bottom here so you don't get confused and you can see that it, it lets you visualize the sound that's being made by the synth and this is uh, just to let you see what we've got playing the sound here this is Silent, which is a um, really fabulous synth um, that I've been using for a long time. So you might want not want to see um, an arpeggio visualized. You might just be looking at basic sound creation. And this is the aspect that um, I was really interested in. So within Silent, you can um, initialize the, the sound. You can either just press Command or Control J, or you can go in Preset, Clear, Init. And now you've got uh, a very basic sound. And in this case, it's just a a sawtooth wave. So if I just push that out the way, and one of the reasons I chose Silent is I can push it out of the way and still see the waveform selection uh, button down here. And if we look at that in the oscilloscope, you can see the, the way the waves look. So there we are. This is actually C2 um, on the keyboard. So there's a sawtooth wave, a sine wave, very basic. You can more or less just about here humming away in the background and triangle wave, the triangle shape and a pulse wave sometimes called a square wave. So you can actually visualize all these different waveforms using the, the synthesizer. Um, you could visualize a noise wave if you wanted. You can see that there's no actual tone in there. It's not playing a musical note. It's just um, all the frequencies uh, together right across the, the screen as you saw it there. Let's have a look. So um, that's the way an oscilloscope lets you visualize the, um, the sound waves. There's something else that you might want to do is combine this with an EQ. And what I have here is the EQ that comes with Ableton. Um, it's called EQ8. And as you probably just noticed there, I might have done it a bit too quickly for you to see it. EQ8, you can have it down in this bottom area here. And whoops, that's still in the noise wave, which is a bit noisy. I'll just put it back in saw wave because that's a fairly popular sound. And you can visualize it using EQ and open the screen up to see it a little bit more clearly. And one of the things that you may know about saw waves is that they contain 
all the harmonics. So what on earth does that mean? If we look at the sine wave, again, play the sine wave, all we've got is what's called the fundamental. So this is uh, C2, you can see in the little blue area to the left there, and it's round about 130 hertz. I should have checked exactly what the frequency of C2 was before I started, but round about 130 hertz, and there are no harmonics, and that's why a sine wave is a kind of dull, uninteresting sound. If we switch this to a soul wave, and again, if we put the oscilloscope up here so that we can visualize it, there's the soul wave. And what we've got with the soul wave is the fundamental, which we were talking about before, and all of these harmonics above the fundamental. And if I just stop, whoops, I can't stop it playing because you won't be able to hear it, will you? Let me just do something more sensible and turn the master volume right down. And this means we'll still be able to visualize the sound, but it won't be driving you mad in the background. So what we've got here is the fundamental. Remember, that was the only thing we had uh, when we were looking at the sine wave. And we've got these harmonics above the fundamental. And if we look at the frequencies of the harmonics, if we say that this is 130 hertz, that's going to be twice that, 260. And if we add another 130 to that, that will be 390 plus another 130. Remember the frequency of the fundamental, 390 plus 130, is that 400? Oops, sorry, that's 390 plus 130, 520, and so on. And so the thing that makes um, a sawtooth wave look the way a sawtooth wave looks is the fact that you've got the fundamental and all of these harmonics, um, which are above the fundamental. So that's twice as much as the fundamental and you're adding the fundamental um, again, frequency again and again. If we change that now to um, pulse wave, some of the harmonics have disappeared. So all we've got with a square wave and again, if we look at it on the oscilloscope to see how it looks, it's a square wave, is the fundamental, once again, but only odd harmonics. So that's 130. So 260 used to be there. It's missing now. And we go straight up to 300, um, around about 390. And then the one that was in there is no longer there. We go straight up to um, around about 660. So I'll just go back to... Uh, saw wave to let you see these harmonics reappearing. So this is the thing that gives the different waveforms a characteristic sound. It's the fundamental, which is all you get with a sine wave, which is why a sine wave isn't very interesting to listen to. And as you add more harmonics, you get different uh, shaped waves. So all of the harmonics, you get a saw wave, only the odd harmonics, you get a pulse or a square wave and a triangle wave, similar to a, a pulse wave or square wave in that you only have the odd harmonics, but with a triangle wave, you can see that the, the amplitude, the volume of them, the loudness of them, that's probably not a technically correct term, falls off much more quickly. So the odd numbered harmonics are there, but you, um, you get them falling off much more quickly and that's what produces the um, characteristic triangle wave sound. So if we move the um, EQ8 out of the way and if I turn this master volume back up so that we can hear the sounds in the background and that's a triangle wave which is again quite an uninteresting sound similar to the sine wave which is just a kind of a hum. So it's for synthesis, usually it's saw waves or uh, pulse waves that you might be using to develop your sounds. And being able to visualize uh, sounds and combine them is something that people um, quite like. And in a wavetable synthesizer, if we just have a look at uh, Ableton's wavetable synthesizer and just see how this works, you actually have a display where the um, waveforms are being displayed. 
Let me just move that. Does that let you see the waveforms? Yes, it does. So you can see when you play the sound, there's the waveform there, and you can move through these different shapes. So that's going from a sine wave to kind of a square wave via a sort of a sawtooth wave via a kind of triangle wave. So the waves we've just been talking about, these are the, the, the wave tables that you find in a wavetable synthesizer. And being able to visualize these waves is really handy. That's what you get with wavetable, as you can see here, um, with um, Serum, which is one of the most popular synths available now. Tidal, which is a free uh, wavetable synth, which again is uh, not Tidal. Vital, do beg your pardon there, I always mix them up. Uh, Vital, which is a wavetable synthesizer. And another one that used to be really super popular that you um, don't hear people talking about so much um, anymore, even though it's absolutely fantastic, is Massive by Native Instruments. So we've got it here, and just to show it's the same idea as um, the wavetable synth we just talked about, here's the way you select, I'm just turning off those other oscillators, here's the way you select the wavetable. You've got um, a table up here uh, to select the wavetables you want, so this is square to saw, and if we play the sound, it goes from a square wave to a sawtooth wave. So, being an older synthesizer, you can't actually visualize the waveforms that you're selecting. And so, this is where an oscillator comes in, and not an oscillator, an oscilloscope comes in and can be really useful. So, there's the oscilloscope displaying the waves. I'll just get massive up and move through the waves, and we should be able to see that waveform changing. So there we're going from a square wave, remember that's what it is, square to saw. From a square wave through the middle to a saw wave. So you can actually visualize it with this free um, oscilloscope. So that's another reason oscilloscopes are really useful with uh, synthesizers like Massive, where you've got these tables where you can select different um, settings from within your wavetable selector, but it can be really useful to kind of visualize what's happening to understand what you're, to be able to understand what you're actually doing. So um, I've been trying this out recently. It's a, as I mentioned, it's something that I became interested in because I saw the video about um, the real life hardware synthesizers in the electronics lab. And I just wanted to have a look at something else actually um, in relation to the, the visualization of waveforms. If we go back to Silent and um, initialize the settings again, preset, clear in it, which is control J, and then just listen to this saw wave. There we can see the saw wave on the oscilloscope. We've looked at this previously with the EQ, which lets you visualize the different frequencies, the, the sounds, these sound bands at different frequencies, the fundamental and these harmonics that are higher than the fundamental. But there's a filter VST, filter plugin that I've uh, talked about before called Volcano. And the reason this is so good is because it lets you visualize the sound just like an EQ on the interface here and so you can see what's happening to these harmonics and listen to what they're happening uh, what's happening to the harmonics and also watch what's happening to the wave shape on the right here so if we turn the frequency of the filter cut off frequency right up so it's not cutting off any sound you can see there's the saw wave that's being produced by the oscillator and the silent synthesizer and as we let's check it as a saw wave yes and if we start to pull down the cutoff frequency 
We can hear the sound becoming duller as these higher harmonics are attenuated, i.e. the volume of them is being turned down. And you can also visualise the way these harmonics are disappearing from the sound. Let's just accidentally click the slope button there. In fact, there's an even steeper filter that will attenuate it even faster. That's a 24 decibels per octave filter. That means for every octave that you come down, the sound level is lowered by 24 decibels. So there's the, the full sawtooth wave. Bring down the filter cut off. You can hear the sound changing. That's because the higher harmonics are being removed from the sound, the sound becomes duller and you can see the way that the waveform's changing. And eventually, when we come all the way down here until we've just got the fundamental left, we've got a sine wave. And I thought that was really great when I saw that at first because I've just been talking about how a sine wave has no um, harmonics in it above the fundamental, it's just the fundamental tone on its own and when you add these higher harmonics you get different shaped waves and if you have all the harmonics even and odd harmonics that produces the sawtooth wave and then as you remove these harmonics the sound changes and in order to understand what's happening to the sound this is why it's quite nice to be able to see the EQ display here with the harmonics being removed one by one and also see the oscilloscope showing the, the waveform shape that's actually being uh, produced as a result of removing these harmonics. Okay, well that's um, the kind of thing that I like exploring. This is one of the reasons I don't produce as much music as I'd like to. Um, I quite often find myself um, experimenting thing with things and trying to understand what's happening with different pieces of equipment and the, um, the use of uh, EQ and an oscilloscope and a filter is, is really great for that. And in actual fact, you wouldn't have to use um, Volcano. I just happened to use that because um, that was one that I, I really like. You could just use the um, Ableton Auto Filter, for example and get the same kind of effect. There's the saw wave and if we open up the EQ hopefully we can see a bit of it behind the oscilloscope and then if we go back to the filter again if you're using Logic or Studio One or Cubase the filters in those doors do exactly the same job. You lower the frequency, the cutoff frequency, you can see the harmonics being removed Hopefully you can see they're being removed. Let me just turn that back up. You can see the harmonics being removed from the sound. As the low cut filter moves down through the frequencies. And then eventually all you've really got is the fundamental. And the waveform is not really very obvious there. Let me just turn up the main volume of the synth to see if I can make that look a bit bigger. No, not really. <laughs> so there, there we go. That's a, a sine wave, although you can't really see it very easily. Maybe if I turn this up a bit. There we go. You can see it a bit more because remember the resonance or the peak control um, emphasizes the frequencies around the cutoff point. So in this case, the cutoff point is round about the, what was the frequency of the fundamental? I think it was 130 when we looked at it before. There we go, there we have it. In fact, I'll just type it in there. 130. And now it's too loud. You just can't win, can you? Right, well, I'm off to do some more experiments with my oscilloscope because, as I said, I really love this kind of thing. And um, seeing the way that different sounds look. I know we're all told that we should be producing music and mixing music based on what we hear rather than what we see. But when we can see what it is that we're actually hearing, I think it makes it that much more interesting. So um, I'll sign off there and uh, continue to experiment. Bye for now.